Hello and welcome back everybody. I'm Phil Fors and this is Parametric Philosophy. Now, uh, this is not a typical video for this channel because, well, it's not parametric at all. I know, I know. Um, but this is, I think it's gonna be super valuable for um, uh, uh, a certain group of people. Um, and really, uh, what I'm making the uh, these these videos for these Rhino foundational videos um, is basically for people who have seen some of uh, you know some some of the grasshopper stuff, some of the Rhino stuff, but they don't have any experience you know in Rhino or even in 3D modeling. And uh, I think uh, what I'm trying to do here is offer some some foundational knowledge, um, some very very uh, you know I want to just really break down what's happening in the software conceptually and uh and um provide sort of a, a really good starting point for um for the, the you know the, the learning process ahead this is not only for the beginners this is also i think a valuable for those who do have uh, some experience in grasshopper and rhino but if you're really dedicated to a thorough understanding of of the Rhino system and the Grasshopper system, I think uh, you might you might learn something from uh, from this video and the next few videos in this series. Um, as you know, uh, Grasshopper is developed uh, off of you know the Rhino platform, so it's really important to understand what's happening in Rhino and and how we can you know develop these systems non-parametrically, and then we can start to incorporate parametric systems even gradually. Uh, into you know into the project design process. So I, I don't know how many uh, Rhino exclusive videos I'm planning to make um, because I'm more focused on the parametric side with Grasshopper. Uh, but that being said, if there is demand, um, I'm totally open to making more videos like this. So if you want to see more videos about certain topics, uh, commands uh, in Rhino um, or you know, if you have any specific project challenges, uh, design challenges, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, I would love to see what you guys think, and I'm totally open to making more videos just about Rhino, because uh, I know how important it is to have a good understanding of what's happening in Rhino. All right, let's go over what we're going to talk about in this video. First, we're gonna do a conceptual overview of 3D modeling in general, okay? Um, and then we're gonna talk about different types of geometry that we need to work with in Rhino. Um, we're gonna then touch on how to access um, the commands that we need for creating and modifying geometry. Then we're gonna touch on uh, how to work in the virtual 3D space and that's going to be getting into the Cartesian plane system. Um, then I'm going to throw at you a few tips on navigating the viewport and how to maneuver the mouse in 2D and 3D. And that's not going to be, you know, an extensive thing. I'm just going to throw some some tips at you that I wish I had, uh, I, I wish I had known when I started getting into Rhino. And lastly, we're just going to touch on using layers and uh, layers have a lot of different purposes and I think it's important to start using them right from the beginning so we can develop a good workflow around using layers. Okay, let's charge right into it. First, let's just break down what we're actually trying to do in 3D modeling software. Usually uh, we have a schematic or a highly, uh, highly refined design of some type of some object or uh, some some building or something like that and we need to do one of two things either uh, and this is generally speaking there's a lot of different uh, things that we might be trying to do with 3d modeling software but but generally we're we're either trying to uh, eventually build this object or we're trying to represent it for the sake of presentation and I think it's very important to understand the distinction between uh, between these two things because it's it's going to uh, drastically change how we approach the the process uh, of modeling it. 
Uh, it's something that I wish I thought about more when I was uh, starting out, when I was in architecture school, it would have been very helpful to, to be more mindful about the fact that we weren't building the, the projects that I, that, we were, that I was making. And uh, I, I often uh, tried to make them buildable and my design co was compromised because of that. So basically, what uh, we need to create virtual geometry that represents matter in the real world. So how do we create shapes? In Rhino, we use what we call commands to create and modify different types of geometry to create the shapes that we uh, need. There are five different types of geometry that we'll need to use to um, efficiently generate the shapes. Um, each type of geometry has a different level of uh, complexity. So um, we can we can open up this Rhino uh, file. We can start to take a look at these different types of geometry. And and like I said, they all have different levels of complexity. And we're starting off with points. It's the uh, it's it's the least complex um, type of geometry. And right here, uh, these are points. And a point is just a a coordinate. Uh, it's basically just a single coordinate. Um, very, very simple. And uh, each one is defined by the X, Y, and Z coordinate and or the X, Y, and Z value. Um, and, and if we go to the next, you know, the next level of complexity, we can, uh, we can take these points and, and we can derive what we call a curve. Now this is a control point curve. It's a specific type of curve. And now that we have a curve, we can delete those points. Um, so this this is a this is what we call a curve, and we don't need to use points um, initially. We can just you know we can just freeform draw it. Um, there's different types of curves. We can do a circle. We can uh, do a, a single straight line. That that is a curve. Um, um, an ellipse would be a curve. Okay, uh, but anything with more uh, edges is not a curve. A square, um, a square has multiple curves, okay? So, or, or a rectangle. So what that means is uh, that would be a poly curve. So uh, a poly curve, um, you know, with, with a poly curve, we could take uh, a single curve and we can, you know, do, we can make another curve. And now that we have two curves, we can join them. And this is a poly curve, poly meaning multiple. And, and so now uh, this is, this is a, a poly curve made up of two curves. And we can, ex we can explode that. And we'll talk more about these commands later. And we can explode that into two curves, or we can join it into a poly curve. And you, you can always see that happening up here in the command line, telling us uh, two curves joined into one open curve. And so uh, a poly curve, um, curves and poly curves can be open or closed. And uh, what that means is uh, whether the start is the same as the beginning. So right now this has a start the start of the curve is one end and the end of the curve is the other end. But if we were to do something like this, okay, and we join this, now this is a closed curve. We can see that up here in the uh, command history, closed curve, okay? So um, we can also use curves to make surfaces. So let's take these curves. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm going to rotate this up. I'm going to um, put another curve in the middle. Um, and I'm going to modify this curve. And I'm going to do what's called a loft between these three curves. And now we have a surface. Um, 
and this surface um, it's uh, a surface is not always again its surface doesn't need to be defined uh, uh, or doesn't need to be created from a curve we can create a surface um, by itself you know as as a plane and then we could modify that plane afterwards and what you see here uh, is that this plane um, is is defined by four points okay so we're always going to be working between different types of geometries depending on uh, you know depending on what's the most efficient way to make the shape that we need and so if we take a surface um, and uh, if we have more than one surface like this these are multiple surfaces and if we join these surfaces together that is a poly surface um, and if we like we 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 said that this poly curve is was an open poly curve and then we made it into a closed poly curve well if we take this open surface and then we um, and then we make some more surfaces so that it's a closed poly surface. Um, we can join this together. And then once, if there's only one planar uh, uh, open face, we can cap it. This is not the, this isn't the only way to make a, a closed poly surface, but uh, we, yeah. So we just made a closed poly surface and um, and now, and, and that's what we call a solid. Uh, a solid and a, and a closed polysurface are the same thing. Uh, solids basically uh, are the only thing that represent, you know, anything, anything real in, in the real world because a surface has no thickness. So this is impossible to exist in the real world. Um, uh, it, it might give you the illusion that it, that it can exist, but this, this is, has a, an infinitely small thickness. And if this were to actually exist, uh, it would have to look, you know, something more like this. It would have to be some kind of offset uh, thing, right, of, of some type of thickness. And this is a solid, so this could exist in the real world, okay? Um, and with a solid, we can do a lot more uh, different types of operations. Uh, you know, we can take this, uh, we can take this, you know, this poly curve here um, if we want to. And, and again, we're just, we're just kind of touching on some of the different things that we can do. We're not going to go in depth, but we can do what we call a Boolean, a Boolean operation. This, uh, it, this is a Boolean split operation. We can use the surface to do a Boolean split. And now we've modified that solid, uh, and, and it's still a solid, even though we've modified, we've cut the geometry apart. Um, and a Boolean, all, all a Boolean is really doing is, you know, we, we could do that a little bit more manually. I could trim this and then, um, but this is, this is now a poly surface. So I would have to use the poly surface to trim the original surface. And then I could join that and make the solid, but it's just more efficient to do Boolean operations when we can. Okay. And the last type of geometry is uh, our meshes. And uh, I don't use meshes very often. They have a specific purpose. Uh, let's just make let's let's make a mesh right now. Uh, we can we can use any type of solid to make a mesh, uh, a solid or or a surface to make a mesh. And um, and we can use uh, we're gonna do fewer polygons for the sake of this demonstration. Um, actually, we can just do a preview here. I can show you more polygons is just a more complex, uh, more complex model, uh, but more accurate. And, uh, and so now we have a mesh, a mesh model. Um, this is, uh, entirely made up of, uh, faces, three point and four point faces, mesh faces. Um, and this is usually used for the purpose of rendering because each face can be assigned a different, Actually, each vertice can be assigned a different, um, uh, a different 
a color or texture and it can you can use that to create a gradient of of color and textures across the across the model uh, which is something that is um, sometimes easier done in meshes than in a NURBS model um, but uh, we lose you know certain ability to edit things when it comes to meshes because we we don't really ever want to if we don't have to we don't want to turn a mesh back into a NURBS model oops um because we get something like this okay oops um this is now uh again a solid a closed poly surface but um so we can't really go back from a mesh into a solid and and make it look like the solid that we used originally now we we lose some functionality or some edit for some uh, so the ability to edit um, these shapes as easily when we when if we if we have to turn it back from a mesh back to uh, a closed poly surface um, because you know I can turn on my solid points and I can you know I can I can edit the shape of this um, like that and it will you know some of this de this data will uh, define you know this this curve to stay to stay c constant like this right um, and if we try to do that in this model um, it's it's really uh, not possible um, at least with this type of editing um, there are specific mesh editing tools uh, that you can use um, but I'm just showing you this to show you that you can't really go back from a mesh into the same solid that you started with. Okay, and uh, and just one more thing, um, we we can really work. We can always work back and forth between different types of geometry, and we can also uh, make certain types of geometry uh, from scratch. So we can take you know a box, and we can create a box without without a, a surface or or a curve or anything. This is now a solid. This is uh, a closed poly surface. And we can do Boolean operations with that. Um, you know, we showed before we can make a surface without starting with any curves. We can also work backwards, and uh, we can, you know, I can take, um, I can take a, a a few edges from this poly surface. I can join that, and I can turn that into a poly curve, and I can use that, you know, to generate more surfaces. For example. Um, and we can also extract the uh, control points from curves if we need to do that. If we need to work back to the points. Okay, so that's uh, that. That generally covers uh, the the seven different types of geometry that we're going to work with when we're building our models. Okay, so how are we actually going to go about generating and editing uh, the geometry? This is where we use our commands. Um, there are four ways to access commands, and this is going to depend on how familiar you are with the command that uh, that you're looking for. So the four different ways that we can access commands um, are we can use hotkeys, we can use the search bar, we can use uh, the icon panels and the windows in the window tabs. Okay, so the hotkeys. Um, are something that we can assign. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going in the order of the most efficient way to to uh, access our commands. So the hotkeys are. We can find that in the document properties, and then we can go to keyboard and we can. There's already some hotkeys uh, assigned, and uh, I've I've assigned a bunch of custom hotkeys depending on the most used commands uh, that I use, um, and I'll assign. Uh, hotkeys to you know the the key combinations that are most comfortable to my left hand uh, I'm gonna make a, a video exclusively on developing uh, you know techniques for using hotkeys um, I also have hotkeys on my mouse I have uh, 12 different buttons on the side of my mouse that I have assigned to hotkeys um, so this is the most efficient way to access commands, so I can use the hotkey Control A. I can draw a curve, 
I have a, a hotkey control W to draw a circle. Um, I can uh, turn on my solid points with the hotkey. Um, I can move the points uh, with the hotkey. And um, uh, so that's that's the most efficient way. And you know, the Rhino in Rhino like paradise, um, you know, when I go to heaven, like it's just gonna be everything is hotkeys. It just access everything in with hotkeys and I model like super fast because everything is right there. Uh, but it's just not realistic. Um, we can't, you know, remember uh, all of the all of the different commands. We we don't have enough key combinations that are close enough to our hand to to have every command uh, assigned to a hotkey. Um, so the next easiest, the next uh, most efficient way to find the command that we're looking for is in the search bar. So I can uh, you know search up anything. And, and usually uh, this is this is the, the first place to start when you don't know exactly what you're looking for, but it will also be the place to go when you do know. Um, you know, um, if you're looking, uh, you know, if I wanna if I wanna twist this, I can just type in twist. This is gonna be weird. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Whoa! Yeah, so that's yeah, so that's a twist. Um, you know, everything, every command is in the search bar and usually just type it in, uh, type in what you're looking for. And uh, it's pretty good at, you know, kind of uh, translating what you're looking for into an actual command. It doesn't need to, you know, you don't need to get it exactly right. If I type in points, um, it will come up with, um, you know, a bunch that start with point, but then a bunch of suggestions that have point in, in the, the, the name, the word point in the command. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, the next thing is, uh, if you want to, you can go through the panels and there's some nice visuals here uh, to find the, the, the command that you're looking for. A lot of them will be uh, in this panel here when we're in the standard option and we can, uh, we can hold it down or we can click the little triangle and it will open up sort of uh, sub, sub options for each of these main uh, commands. And um, the last, the you know, the last way to find the commands that we're looking for are in the tabs up here. Um, it's sort of a last resort, but but oftentimes uh, this is this is you know what you're going to need to do. So if I want to find you know I want to I want to duplicate the edge of this um, this solid into a curve. So, uh, we we can go into the curve tab. You know, it's broken down into these different types of geometries that we've talked about and different types of uh, modification uh, tools. So if we go into the curve tab, we can, uh, you know, find something like curve from objects, you know, and that's where we can find our duplicate edge command. And now we've generated a curve from that edge. Okay, and so that's how we find the commands. All right, so now we need to start to understand how to work in virtual 3D space. So how do we know where we are in space and where we're going? Um, we work within a 3D Cartesian plane system. And uh, what that means is basically we have a grid in three uh, different uh, dimensions. And uh, instead of me explaining it, um, with just my my face uh i made a little grid here that will maybe help us uh, understand what's going on here this is a our, this is a grid in uh, three different dimensions okay and this is uh where i think get, uh, things get really interesting because uh, working in virtual 3d space is a lot simpler than working in the real world because when we're building something in the real world or we're measuring something uh we need to know where we are and 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 we need to know how to you know measure a certain distance while we need to know the direction of you know that ruler and somehow we need to find some some dimension that's it has some degree of accuracy um we don't have to worry about you know in in rhino we don't have to worry about like direction 
um, and stuff like that because uh, really we're, it's, we're working in a, in a very different type of system. Uh, it's a coordinate system, right? Um, and, and we can operate generally in two different types of ways. We can do uh, absolute position or relative position. Uh, and we're going to use uh, these two approaches um, depending on, on, on the project. Okay, so here I've drawn three uh, different grids. And there's a, as you can see, there's an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis. And um, each, there's three axis, axes, and uh, uh, two of the three axes define a plane. So this grid is drawn on the X, Y plane, okay? This grid is drawn on the X, Z plane, and this grid um, represents the Y, Z plane. Uh, and and that's and we're not limited only to working in these three planes, but this makes it simpler to um, you know to develop you know ninety percent of the geometry that we're going to be making. Um, so let's let's just start let's just start to understand um, you know relative and absolute positioning. So I want to make a line that's fifty units long in the x direction in the x axis so i can i'm going to start at the zero zero point and uh, i've drawn this grid uh, so that this this is actually the zero 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 point in the rhino uh, workspace okay so uh, that that's the only way this will work so i can uh you know click there i can start at the zero 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 and uh i can just click on this on the 50 because I know that's 50 units and now we have that line, but we're not always going to have uh, this grid avail available to us, uh, especially in more complex models. So how would we do that without clicking on this uh, area here? Well, we could start, uh, we, we can use coordinates. So I'm not going to click anywhere. I can go, I can type in, in the, in the command line here and click, I can type in zero, zero, zero and uh, so now our point went to there and I can click uh, I know that it's that the the coordinate goes X Y Z so I can go 50 in the X zero in the Y zero in the Z and uh, that's gonna make the line that we're looking for and uh, you know I could push that further uh, I could go 50 zero zero enter um, and then maybe I want it to go in the y direction by 20 units um i can go tw i can go zero in the x 20 in the y uh, and zero in the z and um okay so that so that didn't work um why didn't it go 20 in the y direction that's because uh, we're using absolute positioning and that means that the point is going to go in the absolute position that uh, our coordinate is. Um, so if we wanted to, to draw that the line that we we're trying to draw, it would have to look like this. It would have to be 50, 0, 0, and then uh, we're there, and then we would have to go 50, 20, uh, 0, um, and we can select that. And then if we want to go, you know, want to go in the z direction, it would have to be 50, 20, uh, uh, 40 okay um, and now if we want to go in you know two different dimensions it's we're gonna uh, two or three different we can go in three different dimensions at the same time we could go 70 um, uh, 40 and um, you know 100 um, and we can do stuff like that but I mean we're not gonna be able to keep track of these you know dimension these uh, coordinates for very long but we usually know uh, the dimensions of a part. So this that's why we might want to use uh, relative, relative positioning. I use relative positioning 99% of the time. And what that is, is we can start at this 0, 0, 0 point, and we can, uh, we're gonna, you know, draw a similar line, uh, but instead of going 50, 0, 0, we're gonna put an at symbol. And what that means is that we're we're traveling uh, 
in the in in the um the number of units that we're typing in uh in in the command line uh but relative to the the line that we were just the, the previous uh, point so if we go 50 0, 0 it's going to do the same thing as the last time but again if we do the at symbol this is a relative positioning so it's almost like we think of this as the origin now and we can go uh, 0 20 0 and it will go uh it will go only 20 units in the y direction because th it's almost like this is the origin um and then we could you know we could go uh, at 0 0 uh, 0 40 and it's just going to go it's only going to uh, pay attention to that, you know, Z, Z unit, it's just going to go straight up. Um, and so that's a different way that we can uh, work in the in the in this coordinate system. So I, I kind of said that we're, we we're, we're thinking about, you know, the last point as the origin um, of, of the next line. And that's really not not the right way to think about it. I think I think mathematically, the way that we want to think about this is that once we start a line, uh, we're once we do the first point, or, or we're, we're in a line, we're basically saying, uh, how much do we want to add to the current position, add or subtract uh, from the current position? So if we're at 70, uh, 70 in the x and zero in the y and zero in the z, what we're saying is, if we want to go this way by 20 units, if we want to get to 90, then then we have to add 20 units. So so that's kind of what relative positioning means. So we're adding 20 units. And what if we also want to add 20 units in the y, in the y direction, we can add 20 units and then zero in the Z. And, and that's how we make our line. That's 20 by 20, but it's actually at uh, 90 in the X and 20 in the Y. Okay, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, and let's, let's keep talking about uh, different ways that we can um, uh, draw our uh, geometry. So uh, what if we want to make, you know, it, it's pretty simple. We know how we can make a, a straight line. If we want this line to be 50 units, we can just go at 50, 0, 0. No matter where we started, we're going to get uh, a line that is 50 units uh, in length. Um, but what if we wanted to draw a, a line that's 50 units in, um, you know, at a 45 degree angle? Uh, you know, if we want if you really want, you can do your trigonometry and you can figure out the exact coordinate um, that would be, you know, somewhere around here. It would be some weird number. I don't know. Uh, that's no fun. Uh, I don't think we want to be doing any kind of crazy trigonometry every single time we have to draw a line at an angle. Instead, we can draw that line. Um, we can either we can draw that line and then we can rotate um, from you know, our, our, our origin point, we can type in the number of degrees, and now we have a rotated line. We could also, instead, we could pick that point, and we can define the length by just typing in one single number, and then uh, we have a floating, you know, line that's kind of floating in, in terms of the direction. It can be going any direction, but we've already defined the length. Um, and uh, and then we can, you know, click on something to define the angle. And we can keep doing that um, even after the line is started. So I can type in, uh, I can type in 20 now, and the next line is constricted to being 20 units long. Um, and so, so at any point we can use uh, absolute, at any point we can use absolute uh, coordinate system, relative coordinate system, or we can define the length, or we can just, again, click. We can just uh, click on different points. So we have a lot of different tools to use, even in making one single line, we might need to use all these different tools. Okay, so we're gonna get into, you know, how to, a lot more of this type of stuff uh, in, in later videos. Uh, I guess I should just touch on, you know, if we're making solids, all the same uh, solids or surfaces uh, uh, poly surfaces, all these same rules apply. So we can click on a point and we can either type in a relative, uh, a, re um, a relative coordinate. So we can go 20 by 20. And in this case, uh, 
we only need two two numbers um, because the the box uh, the box command is just going to ask for the x and y dimension and then it's going to ask for the z dimension afterwards so now we're just going to put in what height we want to do what height we want for that box and um, so much the same as we would make a make a curve um, we're using a lot of the same uh, a lot of the same rules we can also just type in a single number and that's going to define the x and we can type in a single number and that will define the y and then we can type in a single number and that will define the z so a lot of this comes down to your personal preference uh, you will learn what works best for you and uh, but it's always good to you know challenge yourself and try different techniques um, because certain things might work for work better in uh, certain modeling situations so now I just want to throw a, a few quick tips at you for how to sort of navigate your way through the 3d uh, modeling uh, you know interface um, because there are a few things that, that might be frustrating if you um, don't know some tricks to uh, to get around them. Um, right now we're orbiting, this is I think the most important thing, uh, we're orbiting around this part and if we were to, you know, uh, make a bunch of these parts um, and we, we wanted to, for some reason, we wanted to go look at this part at the end, uh, see how um, we're having a zooming problem. Actually, Rhino 6, I didn't notice this, Rhino 6 seems to have actually uh, uh, solved, uh, has somewhat resolved that problem, but it's that the zooming, um, uh, it's it's uh, uh, it basically has to do with the, the fact that the camera target is over here at our original object. So it doesn't really know uh, how to zoom to this object because the, the, the original target is on this object. So, uh, and then also it's not, uh, it's not going to always be uh, orbiting around the object that, that you want. Um, in, this, in this case, it seems to, once you zoom in, it'll seem to sometimes um, start to, so here, here it's not, it, I wanna orbit around this object. So I would say if you're, if you're, not, if you're gonna set up one hotkey today, um, I would set up move um, to, or, or what is it called, move um, target to objects. And now uh, we have perfect zoom control and the orbit is around that object that we're looking at. So I have assigned that to a hotkey so that when I'm in this situation and I'm just, I'm just trying to get a grasp on it. I can just type in that hotkey and now I can work on that object. So I think that's one of the, you know, the easiest things that you can do uh, to, to make your, your life easier in uh, working in Rhino. So uh, another thing that, you know, um, one other thing that you might uh, find useful, especially if you're working in architecture, um, if we say that this is, you know, uh, a building and we punch a hole in this building. And now this is a door. I'm gonna change the lens length. If, if we're getting into like the interior of a building, we're probably gonna to wanna to change that lens length to something wider um, so we can get a wider view of what we're looking at. And if we're in that space, uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you might find it hard to look around. If you just hold Control Alt, um, it will lock the camera um, sort of in place and now you can just sort of uh, you can sort of look around as if you're in that space um, you can also do stuff this is a bit uh, less used but I think uh, can I think alt shift will tilt the space if you want to do like a Drake you know hotline bling kind of video like like that Whoa. Um, um, and there's there's a bunch of other uh, you know key combinations that you can use uh, if you if you look them up. Um, I'm going to do a different video about you know how to find different commands that you're looking for. Um, so you can you can get into that if you want. Uh, but there's different ways to pan and to navigate the viewport. 
Okay, and, and the last thing that I want to talk about is just how how to move the mouse in um, in two in in two D space and in in three D space. Let me just use my hotkey here to get the target back on there. Okay. Um, by default, um, um, by default, you know, oh, it uh, the the cursor is always going to be moving through the the two D space. And I've turned on uh, ortho so that the lines are always tracking in the x and the y plane, or the x and the y axis uh, axes. And if I hold shift, um, now it's not constrained to any uh, any of the. Uh, it's not constrained to any axis, and we'd use that sometimes, like if I want to lock onto this point or something like that. Also, if I want to not lock onto any points, um, I can just hold shift and alt. And now I'm not locking onto any points or locked to any ortho, and we and that's very useful sometimes. Uh, but sometimes we do want to lock onto these points, um, and the point the, the points that we're locking onto are dependent on uh, this panel down here. I have most of them on. Sometimes there's just too many uh, uh, points that it's locking to it, and if you just want to lock onto a, a single type of point. Uh, for example, if I just want to try to find the center of this rectangle, I should be able to right click and all of the points turn off. And I should be able to find uh, the center of this rectangle. Nope, there's there's no center to that rectangle. Um, if I draw a circle, now I should be able to find the center of that circle very easily. And this is useful because um, if this circle was in amongst a bunch of other points, I don't know. Um, I don't know where. I, I'm not. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to find that center. Like I got it there, but now there's a bunch of other conflicting points. So if I just right click on the center, uh, I'm always gonna hit that center point. And once we right click again, all the other uh, uh, icons that you had on originally, they'll turn back on so, so you don't have to turn them all on individually. Um, and the last thing that I want to talk about, and, and you can you can mess with, you know, all these other uh, options down here, like the, o, the o snap and the gumball, all that stuff. Um, and we might talk about that in another video, but I just want to kind of go through some of the basic stuff. Um, the last thing that I want to touch on is how you know how to move in the third dimension in Z. There's always going to be depending on what uh, uh, plane you're working in, in in what um, coordinates, uh, in what yeah, in what plane you're working in. Um, there's always going to be a third axis that's a little bit harder to access. Um, but we what we can do is we can we can draw you know easily in the X and Y, and if we want to go up, if we want to go in the Z direction, just go to the last point and click uh, hold shit, hold control when you, when you click that last point, and now you can operate in the um, in that third dimension. Okay. Okay. So the last thing that uh, we need to talk about is layers. Um, layers are super important um, to to our our workflow. Um, they help with clutter. They help, you know, with visuals. Um, this is not a complex model, so, but but once you have, you know, a lot of objects and stuff, you're gonna want to split them up into layers, uh, mostly for two reasons. Um, the first reason is, you know, if I just want to work on this grid, this box and this circle are kind of in the way, and the this box uh, in the circle are in um, are are in the default layer, and I can see that here. Um, so, uh, as long as it's not checked, I can turn those off and now I can, you know, work on this grid if I want to. Um, and, and so with, so this allows us to, um, to, uh, you know, remove, to uh, keep the geometry where it is, but, but we just don't have to, we don't have to look at it. So I can make another, uh, layer, I can call it circle and I can put the circle in the circle layer and now, um, must have been copied or something. Oh, um, I didn't turn it off. If I turn it off, now um, now the circle is gone, but it's still actually there. We just don't have to look at it. Um, 
we can put this line in the circle layer too. Now we don't have to look at those two things. And so it declutters this space. I would put all these other boxes in this in the in some other layer. The other thing that it does, as you may have noticed, is uh, it will change the the line weight properties or the display properties. Um, for example, you know this this grid. I didn't want it to be as distinct. I wanted to be able to see the the lines that we were drawing um, a little bit better. So I made the grid layer uh, gray by clicking this thing here. I made it gray, and um, I left the line weight properties the same. Um, so it's a little bit fainter, and then in the uh, a little bit more faint. And in the default layer, I went in here and I went to the properties, the print width, and I changed the print width um, um, so that these 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 uh, these lines would show up a lot thicker. Um, uh, as long as um, as long as you have this this setting here, so that the print width is by layer. Um, and and we're gonna get into all this stuff a lot more in in other videos. There's a lot more we can talk about about print width and about displays and stuff like that and printing. Um, but this is just sort of to introduce you to the idea. All right, so that's basically everything I wanted to cover in this uh, this first foundational Rhino video. Um, I'm excited to you know dive into a lot more of the complex stuff. There's a lot that we can go into. Um, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know uh, if there's anything else that you want to see. If there's anything else from this video that you want me to, um, you know, uh, talk a lot, talk more about. I'm I'm open to anything. Um, hopefully this is was useful to you. And um, so that's everything. Uh, so I'll see you guys in the next video.